Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for challenge number four in my No Spend November challenge and giveaway series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the latest challenge is, and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I don't know about you, but I have really been enjoying my No Spend November series. I have really enjoyed getting out what I own and putting it to use, and I hope that you have liked the little challenges that I have given out. If you haven't yet heard about my No Spend November series, I'm spending the month of November giving myself little challenges so I can get out what I have and use it instead of going out and buying more stuff. I'm hoping that my subscribers will join along with me. For all of the details on who can enter, how you enter, and what you can win, make sure to check out last week's video. It's the introduction with all the details and it is linked below. But for now, here's just a little bit at what the challenge is. During the month of November, I will be putting out challenges for myself and for my subscribers. You can play along on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the brand new Call Me Crafty Owl Facebook page. At the end of the month, I will tally up those entries and one lucky subscriber will win the now sold out Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. Don't forget for all of the official rules and details to check out the video linked in the description box below. Also in the description box are the hashtags that you'll need to use for today's challenge on YouTube and on Instagram. Don't forget on Instagram to go ahead and tag me at call me crafty owl. And if you're going to participate on Facebook, make sure in the description of your photo that you add your YouTube username. Today I will be making my card for challenge number four and challenge number four is stencil me in. You will need to create a new project using a stencil in some way and then post it online and link it up below. You might recognize some of the goodies in front of me here that I'm going to use today. A lot of them came from the Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit, which is the card kit that one lucky subscriber will win. I'm also creating today's card for my friend Danny's There's a Stamp for That Challenge group on Facebook. I will be making a winter holiday card to meet this week's challenge. If you want to know more about that challenge group, I will have it linked in the description box below. Let's take a little closer look at what I'll be using today from the kit. I will be using the Sparkle and Shine stamp set. I plan on using the little Christmas bobble down here along with the bow for it and the little hanger. I haven't yet decided which sentiment I'll use. I'm using the largest tag die from the kit as well as the festive stencil to meet my challenge. I also got out one of the turquoise sea pieces of cardstock from the kit and from my own stash I grabbed my turquoise sea Gina K ink spot, Versamark ink, detail silver embossing powder, and a blending brush. As I start the process, if I add anything else, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I'm gonna to be cutting my piece of blue cardstock in half at four and a quarter inches wide for a top fold card base. Now because I want to stop stenciling at a certain point, I went ahead and brought in my We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard and I made a score line at five and a half inches. 
to ensure that my stenciling won't go onto the back of the card base, I brought in just a couple post-it notes and I lined those up right on that score line. Now I could have got out my masking tape, but I decided to just go the cheaper route here and then I can reuse these post-its later. To hold my stencil onto my card base, I got out my Scotch Blue removable tape. This will ensure that the stencil stays in place, but later when I pull it up, it will not hurt the cardstock in any way. And I actually end up reusing this later when I do my die cutting. Now I did realize that this stencil is exactly, the stenciling area is exactly five and a half inches tall. So I had to play a little bit with that before I could tape it down onto there. To do my blending, I just use these cheap brushes from the Dollar Tree. I do have enough so that I can mark the neck of it with the color family that I'll be using. For instance, this one here is my blue, so I have that blue washi tape on there. I get some of the ink from my Gina K ink spot, and I just color that in or brush that in from the sides. Because my tag will hide pretty much the middle of this card, I don't need to focus so much on the middle when I am doing my blending. I just keep doing that. I lift it up to see how it's going and I notice that I need some ink in just a couple more spots. So I fix that and then I just love the reveal when you pull that back and see what the stenciling looks like. Because I will need some pretty exact stamping for my tag images, I did go ahead and bring in my Misty. And the first stamp I'm gonna use will be the Christmas bobble, and this will be placed toward the bottom of my scrap of white cardstock. I did go ahead and bring in that tag die to make sure later when I get ready to cut it that everything can still fit on that where I place my bobble at. Because this is a new stamp, I did go ahead and rub my fingers over the top of it just to take off any oils from manufacturing. And I didn't quite like the first impression I got with this, so I went ahead and inked it up again and re-stamped it. That's the great thing about the Misty is you can keep layering and layering and your stamp goes exactly where it should. And with new stamps, there's always a chance that that splotchiness will happen. Next, I want to stamp the string in that blue color too, but I need to make sure that I place it correctly so that later when I stamp the top of my ornament, that there is room for it. So you'll see there, I place down the top of my ornament and then I figured out where that string could go. Before I did go ahead and ink it up, I made sure that the string was straight up and down using the lines on the top of the Misty. I inked that up a couple times and stamped that. Once that string was in place, it was now time to stamp the stuff that I will be embossing with the silver powder. I placed the top of my ornament back onto the Christmas bobble and picked that up with the door of the Misty. And then I chose the sentiment that I was gonna use and I ended up going with Christmas wishes. I placed this as best as I could centered left to right and top to bottom in the bobble. And then I inked this up with the Versamark ink and stamped and heat embossed that. You will notice that I brought in my embossing buddy powder bag and wiped the image before I went ahead and stamped. And that's just so when I pour my powder on that the powder sticks to only where I want it. When I bring in my heat tool, I always make sure to warm it up off camera for about 30 seconds and I heat up the back of the image first. This kind of helps with the warping when you're heating it evenly from the front and back. Once everything looks nice and metallic, the embossing is done and again, I just always love that final look once the powder is melted. Now that the stamping is done, it's time to die cut that image out. I will again be using that largest tag die from the kit and I hold it in place in the cuddle bug with that scrap of scotch blue removable tape from when I did the stenciling. I just love the size of this tag and that stitching around the edges. 
since it's a pretty clean and simple card, I do want to add a little dimension. So I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the three quarter inch width, and I put some of that on the back of the tag. Now I know a lot of you might be newer to my channel and you're new to my big blue roll of foam tape, and I've even had a couple of you say that you chuckle at it. And yes, the size of it is a bit comical, but let me tell you the price and the amount of time that this lasts, it's totally worth a chuckle. I do have the three quarter inch listed in the description box below if you want to check it out. And I'll go ahead and add the quarter inch width too, which I really love for shaker windows. I usually don't use colored card bases, so I decided to cut a scrap of white cardstock to go on the inside of my card so it's easier to write the personalized message. I did decide though that I wanted to decorate it just a little bit, so I chose one of the smaller snowflakes from the stamp set, and I wanted to stamp that on the scrap of paper to see what the full strength ink looks like as well as the stamped off version. I decided down in the lower right hand corner to stamp one at full strength and then stamp one kind of hanging off the edge of that with a stamp off and then I decided to make a third that was stamped off as well. It just decorates the inside a little bit and brings some of that color from the front. I added this piece to the inside of the card and then the only thing left to do was embellish it a little bit. To add some sparkle and to add some more of the metallic silver to the card front, I placed a total of seven of my Elizabeth Craft Designs transparent and silver glitter dots on the front of the card. This is the one purchase, the one crafty purchase that I'm allowing myself this month. These have been out of stock for months and they're finally back in. So I am cheating just a little bit, but I wanna make sure I get them before they go out of stock. Here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my card today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. I can't wait to see how you're going to stencil me in. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.